Hey guys and welcome back for another tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to create a bootable USB drive using a fantastic tool called Rufus. Now if you're like me and you love exploring new software, you're in for a treat, so let's dive right into this. Alright, so to get started, make sure that you have Rufus downloaded from their official website. Don't worry, I've got a link to this down in the description down below for you. Now I recommend using the latest version, which is 4.1 here on the website, it's the very top link. You could also use the portable version, which is 4.1p.exe. The portable version is just a freestanding version of the software. You can run that on your computer without installing anything on, on your device at all. I wouldn't recommend installing the beta just because it's beta software and there can be some issues, and that goes the same with, with any software really. So once you've got this downloaded, you can run the installer and it doesn't take too long at all, really just two clicks and it's already on there. And you'll want to pay close attention to this next step because it's crucial. Before you do anything, take a moment and double check that you've plugged in the correct USB. Trust me, you don't want to accidentally format the wrong device and lose some important data. So take a moment, check the USB before you go any further, make sure that there's nothing on there that you don't necessarily need or desperately need because formatting the USB is a part of this process and formatting the USB will erase all data on the USB device. So be extra careful when proceeding. If you have any important files on that drive, back them up first. All right, now that you've got your USB safely connected to your device and Rufus will automatically detect it. There we go, you should see it right there. And it will show its name, capacity and other relevant information. All right, let's move on to the next step, which is choosing an ISO image. An ISO image, for those who aren't aware, is a single file which contains all of the files of an operating system to make it perfect for creating bootable media like we're doing today. Whether you're a Windows enthusiast, a Linux guru, or exploring a new operating system, the majority of operating systems will have an ISO file that you can use to install the software. Now, where do you get an ISO image? Well, you can often find it on the official website of the operating system. If you want to install and try out, think windows.com, think ubuntu.com. These ISO files are typically free to download, so make sure that you're getting them from a reliable source. Never download them from a sketchy website or torrent them because they can provide a modified or potentially harmful version of the operating system that could affect your system. Okay, so once we've got our ISO image ready, let's go ahead and click the select button here on Rufus and a new window will pop up allowing you to select the ISO image that you want. To keep things organized, I recommend putting your ISO files in a specific folder on the computer. That way you know where they are if you ever need to go back and grab another one. Since this is a freshly spun up version of Windows, I don't have a whole lot on here right now. So I'm just going to keep my ISO file in my downloads folder where I can see it for now, which are famous last words. Next week I will have 40 to 50 new files in here, no doubt. Now here comes the fun part. Look at all these buttons and options. In fact, there are even more behind these drop down menus here. Don't get overwhelmed at this. This is much easier than it seems. You can keep the majority of things the same as what you can see here. We'll talk about two things that you should probably change, however. Number one is the volume label. This is essentially the, the name that you give your beautiful USB device. It can be anything that you want, but just make sure that it's memorable. For instance, I might name this, uh, I might just keep this as Ubuntu 2204.2, but you might name it something like Linux boot, Linux installer. Depending on what you're installing, you might have a high end boot CD. You might call it HBC or HBCD. It of course doesn't have to be anything memorable or unique. You could just call it A or D, just as long as it's named something. All right, and the other option that we're going to talk about is the file system. So I'm just gonna pop this over here and bring this up. 
So there are a couple different options when it comes to your file system. Option number one is new technology file system, which is NTFS. NTFS is the default file system for Windows operating systems, and it supports larger files over four gigabytes, which is great when you're dealing with larger ISO files that need to transfer big files. If you plan to use a bootable USB mainly on Windows-based computers, NTFC, uh, NTFS is the way to go. Option two is FAT32. FAT32 or File Allocation Table 32 is an older file system and is compatible with a wide range of devices including older Windows versions, Mac OS, Linux systems. One drawback is that it doesn't support individual files larger than four gigabytes. So if you have a massive ISO file, FAT32 might not be the best way to go. However, if cross-platform compatibility is essential, FAT32 is the way that you should go. Now, I don't have this option listed on my dropdown, but there is also another option, if I can get this down here. There we go. XFAT. XFAT or Extended File Allocation Table is an improvement on the FAT32 offering support for larger files without the four gigabyte limitation. It provides better compatibility than NTFS and works with both Windows and Mac operating systems. If you have a particularly large ISO file and you need to use a USB on various systems, XFAT is a solid choice. So consider your needs with the system that you'll be working on and choose a file system that best suits your needs. And the TLDR of that is make sure that you know which file system that you're going to pick. NTFS is a solid option for most users, especially if you use Windows primarily. But if you want cross compatibility, XFAT or FAT32 would be your friend. So now that we've selected our file system and we've given it a super cool and memorable name, we're now ready to rock. We can hit the start button. And we'll just hit OK to this and yes to this. You can go ahead and read that on your own time, but there's nothing to worry about. So this is the final turning back point. Once you click OK on this little pop-up window here, that starts the formatting process and then you will start to lose all data on the drive. So this is the last chance to make sure that you've got all of your data backed up before you hit OK. And look at that progress bar go. Now this might take a few minutes or it could take closer to a half an hour. There's no real point in sitting here and watching it do its thing. So maybe come back with a cup of coffee and let Rufus do its thing. And we're back and what do you know, you did it. Rufus has successfully created a bootable USB drive. And that's a wrap, that's all you need to know to make a bootable USB drive with Rufus. Uh, all you need to do now is just test it, which you can do by restarting your current device and booting to the USB, or you can take it to another device and, and test it if you can't restart your current computer. But boom, that's all you need to know how to create a bootable USB drive using Rufus. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to view future content. And don't forget to check out the Rufus software by picking up the latest version from the website, which I'll link down below. Thanks for joining me today, and until next time, take care.